Hi all, welcome to today's Code Snippet Challenge. Right now you're viewing the Code Snippet in front of your screen and uh, this was shared on my Telegram channel. For your information, my Telegram channel link is uh, affixed uh, on the description space uh, of this particular video. So if in case you want to join my Telegram channel, uh, you can get the uh, link from the description. Okay, so this code snippet seems to be a little bigger uh, and obviously we have many things to be uh, learned from this uh, code snippet. So let's get straight into the ID and see the uh, execution of this code snippet. And also let's understand the concepts behind this code snippet. So I'm taking you to the ID and uh, here as usual, I'm going to create a class with the same name as the name that we can see on the code snippet. So let's go ahead and create a class named as alligator. Alligator and switch on the main method. So from here, let's get into action. Okay. So so what I did in this uh, alligator class is from the class level, I declared a variable of a type called integer named teeth. Uh, but you have to notice that this variable is actually uh, declared as a static variable, right? So this is the trick here, okay, uh, in order to understand the code snippet. So the variable teeth is an integer type and this is declared as a static. So meaning is this is going to be considered as a static variable, right? So we have different variants of variables in uh, a Java program. So one, we can call it as a local variable. Two, we can call it as a static variable. Three, we can call it as an instance variable, right? So right now what you're viewing here is a static variable. There's a big difference between a static variable and an instance variable. We'll get into that details shortly. But right now, as per the code snippet, uh, the, the declaration happens for this uh, teeth variable, which is of type static variable. And it is uh, holding a data type called integer. Okay, so what else we have uh, in the code snippet is I have one more variable declared here. But technically speaking, that variable is going to be of no use uh, according to this code snippet uh, evaluation. I'm calling it as a scale toughness. So why this was given is uh, uh, just acting as a distractor. This is just a distractor while you're looking at the code snippet to find out the uh, outcome of the code snippet. I just wanted to place some distractor. But you need to see the difference between the first uh, variable and the second variable. The first variable is a static variable. The second variable is a non-static variable. And these two variables are declared straight into the class. So one is going to be called as a class variable. Okay. And uh, another one is going to be called as an instance variable. So instance variable means the variable tightly couples with an instance, whereas the static variable does not couple with an instance. We'll get into that detail shortly. But right now, this is going to do nothing uh, according to the code snippet because this is just acting as a distractor. To differentiate this, you can call this as a static variable and this is a non-static variable, but both are declared under the scope of the class level scope. Okay, fine. So next, what we have, we have a constructor of this class uh, for this class alligator. So let's go ahead and create a explicit constructor called alligator. And uh, this is a no argumented constructor right now. And inside this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access the uh, teeth variable. See, one thing that you can notice from this ID is uh, if it is a non-static variable, okay, see the difference actually. If I remove this static keyword, you can notice that the 
variable is not italized okay but if i give this uh, static keyword static then you can see automatically the variable is getting italized okay so in order to understand you can notice that the variable which i'm accessing here is the uh, static variable so you can see there is still an italized uh, 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 font is visible right so this is nothing but a static variable we are accessing the static variable inside the constructor okay and what we are doing here is we are doing a post incrementation i guess in the earlier uh, uh, code snippet video we discussed about the post decrementation but here it's all about the post incrementation anyways this is not going to make any bigger impact it's just going to increment by one so teeth is now uh, initially holding a value of zero right teeth is going to have an initial value of zero default default value for the class level uh, variable or class variables are going to be zero it can be either an instance variable or a static variable both are going to consider the default value as zero so in the constructor what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to increment the teeth variable with one so let's see how this teeth variable is going to get incremented uh, according to the um, uh, the executional flow of this program now the next thing that I'm going to have here is I'm going to have a custom method public void snap okay the method name is uh, snap and this particular method is going to carry an argument which is again an teeth so this is the important thing so here again we have a variable declared uh, and uh, it is named as teeth same as like a static variable name so static variable name and the parameter variable name of this method are same and both are of same type integer okay so this is where uh, we get into the confusion okay so we need to stay more focused that this teeth is always a local variable even though it's it's a parameter right the parameter variable means the variable is uh, the variable's life is only within the scope right so it is considered to be a local variable even the parameter variables or argument variables are considered to be a local variables their lifespan is only within the uh, method level so we consider it to be a local variable or the method block their lifespan is within the method block uh, uh, and uh, it is called as a local variable fine so we have one constructor we have one custom method okay which carries an argument uh, variable called teeth and the type is integer and then we have a entry level method okay the program's entry level method which is nothing but main method okay so now what we are going to do is getting into the snap we are going to say uh, a sysout okay we are trying to print the uh, output of the teeth so concatenated with a space so this is the same way i'm writing uh, similar to what we have in the uh, code snippet okay so if you look at the code snippet you can have a look at it so here what we have is we have a sysout statement where I'm printing the teeth variable uh, value and concatenated with a space. Okay, fine. So later in the next line, we have a decrementation process. So what is that decrementation is? Again saying teeth minus minus. Now, from the ID itself, you can uh, understand the, the uh, way how the program is going to execute. So if you look at the uh, constructor in the constructor while you are using teeth it's referencing to the static variable but whereas if you look at the teeth here from the color from the color itself you can differentiate this blue color refers to the static this uh, colored teeth is referencing to the local variable and I'm trying to do a post decrementation so post decrementation means 
uh, it's applied on the teeth variable not to the static variable but to the local variable right so what we might think by looking at the snip code is i mean a snippet of code is this teeth might be referencing to the static okay so there might be few confusions which might arise so we need to be very careful in observing the code okay there are a lot of tricky things are there in this program actually so this refers to the local variable wherever you're pointing this teeth it's only referencing to the uh, local variable so how do i refer it to the static variable then static variables are accessible through the class name right you can access it through the class name itself if, if in case you want you want to point out this particular uh, teeth right uh, the teeth static variable somewhere in the snap method if you want to point then probably you can use it uh, with the class name but anyways if i'm not going to use this parameter okay if i'm not using this parameter now if you notice that automatically the variables what you're seeing here is converted to the accessibility of the static variable they are referring to the static variable so what is the major confusion or the challenge that we have is when i declare an argument with the same name as a static variable here now the priority okay we talk about the priority the priority is given to the local variable now how do i point to this teeth here inside the snap uh, in spite of having the local variable with the same name as the static variable name that is teeth in spite of having the similar names but still i want to point to this teeth somewhere in the snap method then what i can do is i can look forward to the class name which is nothing but alligator alligator dot you can see now you uh, the auto intelligence is uh, helping us to find out the list of uh, uh, variables that belong to the class directly okay since it's a static variable you can able to access from the class uh, name itself now here if you do minus minus then it means it's a post decrementation for the teeth which is nothing but a static variable so this one points to the local variable and this one is pointing to the uh, static variable so that is the actual difference but uh, in my uh, code snippet i don't have this uh, line of code that is only for understanding purpose i uh, explain how we can access a static variable inside the uh, snap method okay fine so this is the full code uh so we have a class we have a static variable we have a distractor variable which is an instance variable we have a constructor and the constructor is trying to access a static variable to do its uh, post incrementation and we have a snap method which takes an argument of teeth which is of type int and uh, the confusion here is the local variable and the static variable names are same but whenever you are using the teeth variable here it only prioritize to the local variable if in case you want to access a static variable inside the snap then you better give the alligator dot teeth now there will be another question if that is the case if i want to use alligator the class name dot teeth then why such things are not happening in line number nine that's another question which will arise if you are a newbie then probably you will have such question it's pretty clear right we don't have any uh, local variable declared like int teeth here we don't have them right so it's pretty easier uh, to make the compiler to understand that the teeth that i'm referring inside the constructor is only the teeth which is declared as static so this doesn't have any conflict the constructor doesn't have any conflict because it doesn't have any local variable with the name called teeth but that's not the case in snap snap is having a local variable with the same name as like a static variable teeth that's where the confusion arises as as i said the priorities will all be given only to the local variables if in case you want to point to the uh, uh, the static variable then you better call the static variable using the alligator the class name fine now what happens in the main method in the main method i'm trying to create a couple of reference for this uh, alligator so new alligator of so what this does this will create an instance right instance of the class alligator a new instance so this will invoke the constructor the constructors are getting invoked at the time of creating an instance so this this uh, syntax will help us in calling the constructor 
automatically. When the constructors are called, then the static variable is going to get incremented with one. So after creating an instance in the same line, I'm trying to invoke the snap method on top of this uh, instance. So snap and you need to forward the teeth uh, as per the code snippet. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to pass. Now you can notice that the color and the italicized style says that we are accessing the teeth. So teeth is now pointing to the static variable. Okay, it's a static variable pointed. You don't need to use the class name here. Okay, why? Because we don't have any conflict within the main method. Okay, whenever you refer to the teeth, it automatically refers to the uh, static variable. But if in case you want to make it more uh, sensible code, then it's good to have the alligator dot teeth. So it's more meaningful that you are trying to access only the static variable here. Okay, but technically, uh, most of the code might not have that because we don't have any conflict. It's enough. You can directly point to the static variable just by pointing teeth. So now, uh, and I do the same line of code uh, replicated. So it's two instance, two alligator instance I'm creating and two times I'm invoking the snap method and uh, while calling the snap method twice, uh, both the time I'm forwarding the static variable. Okay. Now, so we understood the line by line scope of this particular code snippet, but what is the predicted output? How the output will be that we need to understand, right? So in order to understand, first, let's take this teeth, which is initially to zero. Okay, as I said, the teeth variable is going to carry a default value of zero. Then we have a constructor where I'm trying to do an post incrementation. Now coming to the main method here, where we have a instance created for this alligator. And the moment you create an instance, it will invoke the constructor. When the constructor is getting invoked, the teeth variable okay, which is a static variable, which was initially having zero. Now, after invoking the constructor, the static variable is going to get incremented to one, right? So in that case, this uh, teeth, uh, static uh, variable teeth is going to carry a value of one, right? Now, so after this instance creation, uh, once the teeth variable is getting incremented, you're calling the snap method snap method where you're going to point out this value of one. Okay, you're going to forward this value one to this teeth variable. So while you're forwarding this one to this teeth variable, now what's going to happen? This is a local variable here, the local variable, which is going to take the value of this one, right? So once it takes this value of one, okay, now the value that's going to be printed here is not the actual static variable value, but instead it's going to print the value of the local variable. So technically speaking, we have a static variable, okay, which is teeth. And let's say I have another variable, which is a local variable, okay, which is again referred to the variable name as teeth, right? Now the static variable value is one, and this one is going to be uh, uh, passed on to this local variable. And the local variable also takes one. Now, while you're printing this, the teeth, which is taking the value of one will get printed. And yeah, I'm sorry here, uh, according to the code snippet, uh, we don't have LN here. Okay. Uh, we have only print method. So teeth, which is going to print one and there is going to be a space. Okay. Now further, we are doing teeth minus minus. So means it's post decrementation. Now, which teeth is getting decremented? The local variable teeth is getting decremented, not your static variable. Okay. So what's the local variable value? One after decrementation, this becomes zero. Okay. Come out of the method. The scope is lost. Teeth scope is lost because the teeth is local variable. The scope is lost. Now, again, coming to the main method, if you look at the new alligator, one more reference that we create for the alligator class, and we are invoking the snap method. At this time, we are forwarding this teeth again. But notice that when you create one more reference, one more time, the alligator uh, constructor is going to be invoked. So what is there in the static teeth? Uh, 
after uh, the first reference creation, it's one. Now, when you invoke the instance again, the static variable is going to be incremented again. So one will get incremented to two. Okay, so it's going to be to two. Right now, the static variable teeth is going to carry two in it. And that two value is what is forwarded to the snap method, okay, which is a local variable. So if you notice, this two is going to be forwarded to the local variable again. This is again going to create a new memory. Okay, because the scope is already lost. The local variable scope is lost once you come out of the execution of the snap method. So the static variable is carrying two. The local variable teeth is right now empty. And once you uh, forward this uh, static variable value two to this local variable, it becomes two. Now, when you sys out, it will print already one space is there on the console. Now it is going to print two here. One space two. Uh, and then there is going to be a space. That's all. After which, again, teeth is going to be decremented. So what is the value of local variable teeth? Two. When it is decremented, it becomes one. So this is going to, uh, this is this is not going to impact anything. Okay. It is, it is again a kind of a distractor. Okay. To understand the logic behind this uh, code snippet. Fine. So what is the expected output is one space two. After this, it will come to the main method and there is no more uh, executional codes are there. So it will come out of the main method and the program terminates. So the expected output is one space two. So let's go ahead and see if that is the output that we are getting. Run this program. Exactly. So what you're seeing right now here is one space two, as I explained, right? So now exactly what is the difference that you should notice is the difference between the static variable and the local variable. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing that you have to understand, they are not instance variable. So static variable, static variable value is getting shared across multiple instances. Okay. How many ever instance you create doesn't matter. Okay. All the instance will share the same static variable. That's why we declare static variable. We go for declaring a static variable because all instances should share the same value. Okay. So if it is an instance variable, like a scale toughness, scale toughness is an instance variable. So for every instance, it will allocate a separate memory for this variable. Okay. And their value will be very, very much privatized to that particular instance alone. But the static variable is not privatized to the particular instance. It is accessible by any instance and uh, any instance can modify the value and the modified value will be visible to another instance. Okay, because it's shareable. The static variables are shareable variables. Okay, for whom it can be shared across? It can be shared across any number of instance you create doesn't matter. So overall memory is going to be only one. Even if you create some six references of alligator, it's going to have only one uh, memory allotted from the class level. That's why it's called as a class uh, uh, variable, okay, where the, uh, the static variables are accessible by any number of instances. But if in case, if you treat it as an instance variable, then if you create six alligator instance, then you'll be seeing six memory of that uh, variable gets created because it's more uh, specific to that particular instance alone. So that is the difference between an instance variable and static variable. And you also saw the difference in using a local variable. Local variable scopes are only within that uh, scope, uh, open and close calibrations. It could be an if block, it could be a while block, it could be a method block, it could be a constructor block. Within that block alone, the lifespan, lifespan of that variable is what we call it as a local variable. Instance variable is as long as that particular instance exists, the variable also exists. Static variable is as long as the execution of the class exists, the static variable will get exist, uh, existed and it is shareable across multiple references. Now, one thing that you have to understand here is the same code, I'm going to take it into a particular visualization uh, site. Okay, so 
before that let me also give you one uh, understanding so where the static variable uh, uh, values are getting stored in which memory it's getting stored in the heap okay there's a specific space called permanent generation area inside that the static variables okay company here in this case company is a static variable the same way in our case uh, it's going to be a teeth teeth is going to get stored in the permanent generation area and that is shareable across multiple instance see there are two instances company which is an static variable is shared across two different instances right so these are what id and names are very specific to this instance or an object so it is called as an instance variable id and name are instance variable but company is alone exist existing as a static variable and that uh, it is shareable across multiple instances but this is applicable the diagram what you are seeing here is applicable till java 8 after java 8 greater than java 8 version onwards there is no perm gen okay uh, instead they bring something called meta space okay meta space and this meta space is actually outside the uh, heap and inside the heap there is no space like perm permanent generation area or uh, anything directly the uh, the static variables will be placed the static variables will be directly placed in the heap memory before what happened was Static variables are placed inside an heap, but in a specific location called permanent generation. After Java 8, there is no more permanent generation area. It's directly going to be placed in the heap memory and it's going to be shared across multiple instances. But the information about the static variable will be carried in the meta space. Meta space will carry the meta information about that static variable. So you should know technically the permanent generation area which was existing uh, till Java 8. After Java 8, there is no permanent generation area in the heap memory. All static variables will be directly placed in the heap memory. But the information, the meta information about that variable will be captured in the meta space, which is outside in heap memory. So this is the place where the static variables are getting located. Okay. Now I was, uh, uh, I was explaining about this visualization, right? There is a website called Python Tutor. Okay. If you go to this Python Tutor, what happens is, uh, if you capture any code, it can be for Python or JavaScript or C or C++ and even for Java. Okay. So right now I'm using Java 8 here. So I'm going to paste the code uh, of uh, our code snippet. Okay. So if you notice here, in this, uh, in this visualization, this is a visualization uh, tool. Okay, you have a visualization execution tool. If you click that, what will happen is it will help us to understand how the execution happens line by line in this entire uh, code snippet. So let's click on visualize execution. Let me, yeah, it will take some few seconds to load its graphical visualization view. Great. So here we come. So, uh, just copy paste your code in the space, okay, choose Java 8 and you click on visualization, it will, on the right hand side, it will show a frames and object. Now, listen carefully, the class is loaded. Which class is loaded? The uh, alligator class is already loaded. So, once the class is loaded in the memory, automatically the static fields are also loaded. That's the need for static variable because static variables are binded to the class, not to an instance. So if you look at it, the moment we click on the execution, anyways, the execution starts from the main method. Right now, the execution is on the line number 16. It, it doesn't complete its execution. But when the, the whole classes are loaded, when the class is loaded, all the class members, okay, the static members are getting loaded. So alligator.teeth is defaulted to what value? Zero. Okay. Now let's see uh, by clicking on the next uh, execution. So here you have the next button. Just click on that next. This will ensure that this 16th line is getting executed. Right now it gets executed. Now you can see main 16, the line number 16 it is in. Click on next. So right now it's helping us to 
get into the main and start creating an instance click on next again now what happened this instance got uh, created it's 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 going to create this instance at the time of creating an instance you can see the instance variables are loaded instance variable is what scale toughness so this refers to the the instance of the alligator and it points to the scale toughness now when you create an insta instance as i said the moment you create an instance it will go and invoke the constructor now that's what the pointer is pointing to so it will go to the constructor inside the constructor it's going to get into that teeth so teeth is what right now zero after the seventh line after the seventh line is getting executed so right now the instance is in the initialization stage just click on next automatically you can notice that the teeth is now incremented to one okay because the static variable right this is a static variable pointing to the static variable and the value is one next it will come to your uh, line number 16 again okay after the execution of the constructor it comes to the line number 16 in the line number 16 we still have a call to the snap method by forwarding the uh, static variable value to the parameter of the snap method so that will happen right now let's go ahead and click on next now see it gets into the snap method now if you notice the instance is successfully created and called the snap method and there is a teeth variable this teeth variable is within this snap uh, 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 within the snap method okay there is a this uh, this is pointing to the instance and there's another local teeth is there okay so this teeth is going to carry the same value of that one which is like teeth uh, 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 the static teeth variable value and uh, don't misinterpret this teeth is not belonging to the instance the teeth is belonging to the scope of the snap method please understand right now the pointer is pointing to the line number 11 okay now you are on the snap method scope inside the snap method scope there is one more teeth which is a local variable the local variable value is same as the static variable because the static variable value is what is forwarded on top of calling the snap method now inside this the 11 the line number 11 you can see that the teeth need to be printed this is printing the local variable value which is nothing but one so let's go ahead and click next so if you notice here is where the output is so let me do a little bit of zooming work okay so now if i say next after the system gets printed now the value is printed as one okay you can see the print out print output which is one but this is printed from the local variable not from the static variable uh, then the teeth minus minus happens when the teeth minus minus happens okay now see the local variable is getting decremented but not your static variable because this teeth as i said it's not pointing to the static variable it's only referencing to the local variable so local variable comes back to zero and the scope will be lost once you come out of the snap method you can visualize that right now so if i hit next the scope will be lost see so returning value void it's it's returning nothing the method returns nothing that's all the scope of this teeth is lost the execution of the snap method is done now you are coming back to the 17 the 17th line will do the same process of whatever we have seen so far so if you hit next now it will go to the constructor invocation because you are creating an instance and for this instance you can see there is one more scale toughness is allocated so scale toughness is a instance variable for every instance individual memory of the scale toughness double type memory will be allotted you can click next now again we are pointing to the static variable which is shareable variable which is already one now it will become two see now it became two right later if you come and uh, hit next you are coming out of the scope of the constructor and coming back to the 17 now you are invoking the snap method so it goes to the snap method execution again now you can notice the local variable teeth comes in don't misunderstand this two is because the static variable uh, two is what is forwarded to the local variable so the value is two for the local variable this is only pointing to the local variable 
and if you click next the teeth is going to be printed now if you your eye should be on the print output now it will print two okay see one space two right then the teeth is going to be decremented which teeth is going to be decremented again it's going to decrement the local variable teeth not your static variable so you can click on next and notice that it will become one right it became one and if you come out of this snap method the scope of the local variable is lost completely and now right now you are pointing to the line number 19 okay the execution pointer is on the line number 19 and uh, this will ensure that you're exiting out from the main method so that your old whole program gets terminated and all the memories will get lost it so hit next and just come out of it and automatically you can see the entire execution comes to an halt and the mains return becomes void and your program gets terminated but if you notice in the memory the static memory uh, is still holding that uh, teeth which is carrying a value of two but there's no instance level memories are existing here so this is how practically your code will get executed and it will allocate the memory on the respective fields whether it's a static fields or whether it's going to be an instance fields accordingly the execution happens so i advise you personally to make use of this pythontutor.com and go to the java uh, link okay there is a link above where you can just uh, look for java tutor and this will help you to choose uh, the java 8 language and you can copy paste the code and go for line by line execution and understand how the memories are getting allotted for the instance variable for the local variable for the static variables how the execution happens from where it starts its execution how the execution goes on the next uh, level of, uh, uh, of flow it's all more like a debugging okay it's we can also do the same in the debugging but it seems to be a little complex to understand because here it's more of a visualization right you can make use of this visualization uh, outcome in order to understand the concept more in detail okay so i guess i have given the best of the explanation for this code snippet that i've shared on the telegram on my telegram channel today and the output also we have seen i've tried my best to explain you line by line so please notice the difference between a static variable a local variable and an instance variable if in case you want to gain more knowledge on it you better go to this pythontutor.com and try to see how the java code snippet is getting executed line by line and also how the allocation of the memory happens for the static instance and local variables including the method okay main method snap method so which line you are in that also will be pointed right so that's it for today's uh, code snippet explanation it was a bit lengthier but that's fine because we need to understand the concept more in detail rather than just looking at the uh, code snippet from uh, from the uh, narrowed space just come out of the box and think how many informations are there in the small snippet of code okay so thank you so much uh, we'll connect up in the next code snippet challenge have a great day bye